Good morning, and as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost Sunday, I would like to use this opportunity and um, invite all of you to be here uh, at church and celebrate the coming uh, of the Holy Spirit, the promised one. And I, I promise you that it's going to be a beautiful worship service and experience. Within those lines, I would like to introduce you to a, a very uh, everyday topic to, to a Christian. And that is about our godly character. And uh, we're going to read from Psalm 15 where David seems to have a very uh, traditional and which I like it, very conservative approach um, to this topic of having a godly character. And then he seems to uh, address that as an op not just an obligation, but uh, it must be there. You must show a godly character to have access to God's presence. And uh, I will, I'll make some uh, closing remarks in, in how do I find this connection to Pentecost Sunday. But let me start with, with this. Um, I remember younger, younger age, how much attention my, my parents would put on my behavior, on our my, my siblings and just our behavior overall. Um, especially, and I'm sure you'll relate to this, when if you guys have guests over, uh, that's when everybody has to be impeccable or school, just to make sure you're getting not only good grades, but your behavior is just exceptional. And the place that actually they emphasize the most was at church. It was our behavior at church. And believe it or not, when I look back now, I, I loved it. I really liked it because it seemed to bring a very special respect towards a house, a home, where we gather to worship and praise our God. And of course, I try to imitate that now with my children. But I tell you, I, I enjoy it so much when, when I see a parent maybe correcting or encouraging their child here at church in regards to their behavior. I just, I just love it. Because here's what I believe. When they're younger, you teach them what to do until one day they will realize why they do it. Why they should continue to do it when there is no other voice enforcing them a certain behavior. Now in this David Psalm, it's very, very much spiritual, his approach. And I like the title. It is, it is titled, The Character of Those Who May Dwell with the Lord who may dwell with the Lord, that, that seems to introduce a condition that there must be a specific, certain character for you to dwell with the Lord. Let me read it for you. Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? This is verse 1. Verse, one. verse 2, he gives the to-do list. 1. He who walks uprightly. Number two, he who works righteously. So walks uprightly. Second, works righteously. Third, who speaks the truth in his heart. He brings forward this, this very easy connection into our access to God's presence. One, walks uprightly. Number two, works righteousness. And number three, speaks the truth in his heart. Now, he'll also tell you what not to do. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friends, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he or she honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his heart uh, on his hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. What is the consequence? He says, he who does these things shall never be moved. You know where from? The presence of God. A lot in just five verses. 
But I want you to put attention to the, the, the specific way that he answers to the question, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Not everyone. And here's what we have to understand. Yes, everyone is welcome to come, but not everyone may have access to God. Our access to God is through Jesus Christ. He came to us to give us that access. But within that access, there is a change that must happen in us, which shows forward our godly character. And that's what I want to remind you about. Now, on Pentecost Sunday, uh, through our sermons and songs and prayers, we'll be reminded of the coming of the Holy Spirit and just filling those disciples with power. Well, the thing is, not everybody was in that room. So who could be in that room? Who could have been in that room to experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? I think it goes within these lines. Those who walk uprightly, those who work righteousness, and those who spoke the truth in their heart. And I think if we come with this character in our hearts, if you go to God with this type of godly character, you're, you have access to God. You have access to the Holy Spirit. And so think about it. I, I invite all of you to, to, to examine your heart within the lines of Psalm 15 and uh, see how is your godly character going. I'll see you Sunday. God bless you.